Going back to, I was going to ask you about the blowback and you touched on it from Paul's murder. But a lot of people watching this wouldn't understand what you said about the chin. And could you just explain who the chin is, what the beef was between the two families and what the retaliation was? Well, you know, in a mob, you can't just hit anybody you want, especially a sitting boss. So any boss from any crew, unless it goes to the commission and everybody approves it, you can hit the boss. If you don't, the reason why they're so strict with it is because they could be the next guy getting killed. So uh, Giganti was the boss of Chin. Giganti was the boss of the Genovese family. He was probably the most powerful family, even though you hear the Gambino family was. But Giganti had, and they were known to be a very quiet, powerful family. And uh, Lucchese family, uh, Amuso, Vic, also from Howard Beach, same neighborhood of Gotti, uh, despised Gotti. And he was also very powerful, and he was aligned with Lucchese with the Genovese family. So they decided on uh, what Gotti did, obviously, was against Cosa Nostra law, and we're going we're gonna to hit some guys and make sure that uh, they understand that we're going to hit Gotti too. So they hit Eddie Lino, uh, a made guy for Gotti. Gotti didn't hit him, nobody back. They hit Frankie De Chico in a, in a bomb. They didn't hit anybody back. They hit Bobby Borriello in front of his house. They didn't hit anybody back. They hit Joey Scopo, that guy he placed as one of the acting bosses of one of the factions, the Columbo family. We didn't hit anybody back. So this was the rhythm of what the public and the kids and everybody doesn't understand. And then when he got in trouble, he blamed his goomba was Angelo Ruggiero. And he fucked him and shelved him and blamed him for getting caught on tapes. Yet God, he got caught on more tapes than him. And then when he got caught again, he fucked Sammy Gravano. And he blamed everything on him. And then he fucked Frankie Loke and he wouldn't let him even defend himself or meet with his lawyer without him being there controlling the case. So Frankie got life. You know, so that's history. That's the truth. So, you know, on a personal level, uh, you know, I could talk about the the outside of the, you know, God family. And I always tell everybody the same thing. I don't want to do that. I'm talking Cosa Nostra. I'm not talking about, you know, the like him, like a little bitch. Yeah. You know, so that's him that does that stuff. And that's why he's not man. And that's why people don't respect him. But on the other hand, at least his father was a street guy. At least his father was a gangster. And at least his father, maybe he wasn't, you know, good at what he did because he really wasn't. He, you know, the media needed somebody to be a sucker and he raised his hand. He was a lot more real than his son, though. No, he's a street guy. I mean, listen, yeah. his father His father went to the same high school as me, Frank K. Lane, Brooklyn. The kid was born with a little silver spoon in his mouth. And then when daddy left, his own sister wrote an article in 1992 that uh, my brother doesn't have the stomach for this life and he can't do it. And then he filed a million papers against me when I came home from jail. Yeah, you know, he filled, he filed it with my parole. He filed it with the FBI. He filed it with Washington, D.C. He had his sister file. They all filed that I'm going to kill him. So, and then he wants to talk nonsense. I ain't going to kill him anyway, but what are you filing all these papers for? Yeah. And, and, and then you filed in the, when you're on the courthouse steps and you said your life's in danger. So just go the fuck away. No one cares where you're at. No one's paying attention. And stop this nonsense calling yourself a boss because that's a fucking joke. You know, you, you, you got put in a position because your father was in that position and your father happened to take down not just the mob, he took down his whole family. It's almost like a child attention seeker, isn't it? it? Because he ain't, you know, he's not, he never got there. You know, he just doesn't know what it is to be a man. If you watch a weak guy that's like him, he stays with all weak men. And I'm not talking physically. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody, that my, I got friends that never got into a fist fight and they're the biggest men around. So I'm not talking, I'm talking about gentlemen men that you can have a conversation with. He stays with clowns, complete clowns, because he wants to feel like strong. He wants to feel important in front of him. I stay with men. Yeah. And, and those men make me a more of a man because they're, they're intelligent, tough guys, whatever, businessmen, you know, guys that you can respect. you're not an equal. You don't think any better of anyone else. You're not an equal. Well, the only insecure guy stays with guys like this. It's, you know, it's an yeah. insecure quality. You're not fooling anybody. You can't get on an interview. Ask them to do a show with you. To please come and I want to ask you some questions. You want to ask them that, did you say on, on YouTube, I only ratted on my enemies? Well, I definitely ain't his friend. So- did you go and make queen of the day? He can't come talk to you because who is he going to bullshit? You're going to hammer him. You're going to say, what the fuck are you talking about? You went in and you made a deal. You became queen of the day. Yes or no? Did you say, I said it a joke on I don't know how many interviews and shows I did. He says he only ratted a little bit. I says, well, I got that broad pregnant just a little bit over there. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? You ratted. 
You had the ability to give me 3,000 years. How'd you do it? Just a little yeah, bit? Yeah. You know what I mean? And these guys will tell you that, you know, these guys were away with me when they, they heard me on the phones. And I was trying every escape plan there was out of Brazil penitentiary when this guy was talking. I said, I'm fucked here. And then you got all the captains saying, if I'm not nice to Johnny A. Light, that he's going to kill me. What kind of statements are these guys making? Yeah. Well, you're allocuting to positions in the mafia. You ain't a lot of allocute. What, you change the laws? Now you're allocuting, and you're allocuting to the existence of the mafia? So you, when it's convenient, everything changes. Well, with just what Jeannie Gotti did to Joe in jail, you disrespectful fuck. Joe never fucked with you. Joe didn't have an ego. Joe was a quiet guy. You ain't going to turn that around at something. There was too many guys there. You know, Persico was there, the boss of the Colombo family, his brother, Teddy. There was a million, I can name a million guys there. You know, so. Probably the respect from the whole mafia has gone, haven't they? Because there's that many people who just talked. And, and you, you know, you, when you have that many people talking, you lose the structure. When you have uh, guys that don't belong in that life, you know, you got like, you know, and it was some nice guy, kids, like Vinny Butch, Corallo, you know, these guys got straightened out in my house. You know, he's a nice kid, I guess. Big yeah. kid, good looking kid. He's running around with Gotti. He got no business. He's the only street guy. What the fuck are you doing in there? You know, what, what are you, what's wrong with the father? What are you making this kid for? But this goes on day and night. Where I had a kid, you know, I talk about this other kid, Banano Skipper, Ronnie Gialenzo. I call him a punk too. I mean, he set up one of Gotti's brother-in-laws for me. And then after I left him there from the street for dead, this idiot picks him up and takes him to the hospital. Who's a rat? You just set him up. What kind of gangster are you? We you got scared he's going to die, so you don't want to get blamed with it with me. You know, and then you want to call so me. So you took right. him to the hospital. Yeah, he took him to the hospital. I said, and I, and I said the message after that, I should have chopped this fucking kid's head off. You setting a guy up? Who the fuck are you taking him to the hospital? Now that ain't a rat. So you you just want to sell pills and you want to sell weed and you want to sell whatever a little coke and you want to run, run around with a crew of jerk offs and say you're a gangster. But if the police call for anything serious. Oh, well, no. you know, if I they picked him for that, and he was going to give me up. What, <laughs> what he, I was amazed that he took him. I go, why the fuck did you take him? Because they thought he was going to die. Who gives a fuck? I said, that's why he left him there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but how do they change that? I don't know. It's, you know, it's mind boggling. You know, if you want to be a gangster, that's what you do. So you said when the chin was retaliating, Gotti was absorbing the blows. Was his game plan... Just sacrifice these people, I'm the boss, absorb the blows and ride it out, not go tit for tat. Listen, exactly. He was going to throw anybody under the bus to keep himself out there. And listen, we're in this room. It's being recorded, right? We assume every room's recorded. Why the fuck am I going to blame every crime in the world on you? Why am I talking about it? Just because I know if it's bug, I say, see, listen to those tapes. I didn't have nothing to do with it. It was him, 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 him. I mean, there's nothing else to say here. We're not working on Wall Street. We're not bankers. The fuck you talk? Our laws, when you commit a crime, they're not supposed to be spoken about, especially a murder. It's a death sentence. Mm -hmm. So when he brought up these murders, what's that about? I want somebody that's a, you know, a historian to tell me what's it about. I want them to tell me why isn't everybody writing this? Why, why are they sending a false message of the history of the mob? because some guys in the media wanted to build up this guy to be what he was, but that's not reality of, of who it is. Would you want him to be your boss? Would you want him to be your boss? Who's gonna want him to be your boss? When this is what he, a, a real boss, a guy that stands in front, he takes the weight. He's the one that's doing all the shooting. He's the one going, okay, you're at a certain position now, and you know, your, your days are over, but you never were a shooter before that. And you stole a position because you had a lot of friends, without a doubt, that were fucking very loyal to you, Johnny Koenig won. And the reason why I like Johnny is because he was a nice guy. He drove around on boats and bikes and he had a good time. He wasn't want to sit in the club all day. And that little bitch Gotti Jr. stealing all his money when he went to do 50 years because of his father, you're stealing the guy's money. And then you got a brother that's fucking you because he's all high and he's too weak to handle John. And then you, you know these guys want to know where's the loyalty. There isn't going to be, I was supposed to kill Gotti Jr., See, uh, uh, the brother Pete Gotti, even though I like him, he was in the package, and the brother-in-law Carmine. The same guy that gives me the guns, Charles Koenig, gives me up that he gives me the guns for $700. So when people ask me, well, you know, didn't you testify here? Fuck yeah, against the guy that just gave me up on a fucking triple homicide I was going to do, because he's a junkie. He's not his brother. He left his brother suffering in jail. His brother couldn't get a favor out of me. He had to come to me through him or through his uh, uh, adopted son. 
that's the reality of what these kids got to know. You know, and I like Johnny. I still like Johnny. I don't know what his sentiments are, but he knows his brother was weak. When you get away with crimes for years, there's a degree of arrogance. We were joking, we're above the law, we're never going to get caught, all this kind of stuff. So Gotti goes to all these trials. He's got this killer legal team, gets named the Teflon Don. Do you think that just fed his ego and made his guard slip and he spoke more to give more evidence up? No, because he beats these cases because Sammy takes the reins and tells us all how to get to these, these, these juries. We're all in on it. Sammy's the one running the show, but we're all part of it. And he's getting, so John knows he's going to sit there. He's got his chest out because he ain't going to jail because Sammy took care of it. So everything Sammy saved his life, how many times? Sammy has the power. Sammy has the guy. Sammy's making the money. So you're fucking jealous of Sammy and you're trying to fucking hammer Sammy. And listen, they can, the rest of the mob, when Sammy testifies, they can blame Sammy all they want. Here's what I'm going to say. The same thing I said to these guys when I was in prison. Well, you guys are gangsters. This is the Gambino family. Why didn't you fucking kill Gotti Sr.? And Sammy wouldn't have to talk. He had cuffs on him. He's in Manhattan jail. Never had a chance to get free because of Gotti just hammered him on a fucking thousand tapes. Kill Gotti. In jail, kill him. And it's the same thing with Junior Gotti. I'm sitting in the penitentiary. Why the fuck are you killing him? Aren't we the Gambino family? Isn't that what we do for a living? So when it's time to kill these guys, why aren't you killing them? Because they got that name? What the fuck does that mean to me? So... That's the realistic part of the, of the mob. And the realistic part of Sammy, he's got to be frustrated shit. And all these guys, whoever he later on implicated and whatever, it's their own fault because when Sammy was on the street, he was taking care of business. Why didn't you take care of it for him? And you left him desolate. You know, it's not like you had a chance to go kill him. And you know how many guys are in prison? You give a guy who's never getting out. You guys know. Hey, give him a million. Hey, the family again, being who gives you a million dollars to your family. Hey, you're, you're near Gotti in jail. Hey, stick him up. Stab him up. Kill him. Why didn't you just do it? When you want to be the mob or you want to be fucking Girl Scouts? I, don't, I mean, you know, you have a choice. I mean, these days it's different. I understand that because of technology. It's not the same. There's cameras everywhere. There's cell phones everywhere. It's a little more difficult. But in those days, not at all. It was easy. We're not offering a million, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth a million. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you 10 I'll give now. you the 10 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 